Bismillah ar um, So we stopped here last time. Uh, so we talked about the multi-level uh, blind coding scheme. And uh, uh, the idea here is that we try to increase the number of levels in each signal element to try to uh, uh, code um, more than one bit at a time. Uh, in which case we can reduce the bandwidth. Um, so for this scheme, we said that in general for, for multi-level line coding schemes, we have uh, this rule which states the fact that uh, the group of size M, which means they have a combination uh, of uh, binary bits uh, which is equal to 2 to the power M, this has to be less than or equal to the L to the power N, where uh, L is the number of levels in each signal element, and N is the number of signal elements we use. Okay? For this particular scheme, the rule is fulfilled at the equal sign, which means I do not have any extra signal elements other than the ones that I use for mapping or for coding. Okay? And we said that um, this way we can have a one-to-one -one correspondence so we can map each two bits into one signal level. We have four signal levels. And in that case, we end up with the possibility that if we have equal pattern of bits, like for example, all zeros or all ones or all zero one zero one zero one or all one zero one zero one zero, all these combinations will uh, cause serious problem uh, because the if we have cons if we have these patterns, then we end up with constant voltage, which uh, corresponds to the DC component, and it also uh, degrades the self synchronization. So we were able to fix 50% of this by having this next, next uh, column. So we try to have some in, in, inversion of the voltage subject to some condition. So if the previous level is positive, then we use this column. If the previous level is negative, then we use this column. So doing that, we were able to fix the problem of DC component and self-synchronization for 50% of the time. Okay? So, um, and the main reason for this is that the, the rule is fulfilled at the equal sign, which means that we do not have any redundant signal elements that we can use to increase the synchronization and, uh, and try to reduce the DC component. So today, continue this, this discussion by explaining another line coding scheme, which in that case uh, has uh, uh, or maps eight bits at a time, as opposed to only two bits. So it adds, it, it codes uh, eight bits at a time. In which case, how many combinations do we have? Two to the power eight, which is eight to 56. Okay. So how many uh, signal element combinations do we have? Well, it says here that you have um, six signal elements. We have six signal elements. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. For each signal element, we have three levels, which means that uh, L to the power N here is uh, three to, to the power six, which is 478, which is a lot. It's almost double the 256 which means that we end up with more than 200 signal element combinations that are not used for mapping the bit patterns. Okay? So, of course, the rule here is for, uh, fulfilled, of course. It's satisfied because the 256 is less than uh, 478. So, what's the benefit for me to use these extra redundant signal elements. The, these extra redundant signal elements can be used for two things. For enhancing synchronization and 
removing the DC component or uh, reduce the DC component. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to impose, I'm going to enforce some condition on the signal element mapping. Um, so there is the concept of uh, weight. The weight is the, the difference between the, the minus signs and the positive signs. Okay? So, at the beginning, I'm going to have a lookup table where I map each of the 256 bit representations into some of these signal elements. So this scheme, what it does is that it says, okay, I'm going to design this lookup table such that always these signal elements, they have either zero weight or positive weight. What does that mean? Zero weight means that the number of negative signs equals to the number of positive signs. This means that I have a zero weight. It's even. The number of positives equals the number of negatives. This means the weight is, is zero. Or the weight will be one. In that case, I have negative, positive, negative, positive, positive. So I have three positives and two negatives, which means the weight is plus one. Okay? So in that case, if you, if you consider all the combinations of the signal elements that have zero weight and uh, positive one weight, then they will, they will actually be enough to map the 256 bit representation. So the scheme starts with initially mapping the uh, 256 bit patterns into either zero weight or plus one weight for the signal elements. Okay? So if it happens that you have two uh, bit representations like this, two consecutive bit representations, that based on the lookup table, based on the lookup table, you have positive one weight. This means that if you allow this to happen, the number of positive voltage levels will be plus two, right? Or more. So, so in that case, in order to enhance the, uh, the, the self-synchronization and remove or eliminate the DC component as much as possible, we want to maintain the fact that the number of positive voltages are more or less equals to the number of negative voltages. So what will happen here is that instead of using the, the exact um, signal element representation here, we will invert it. We will invert it completely. Yani this is the complement. So if you have uh, the same bit pattern and this one has a weight of positive one and this one has a weight of positive one, I'm going to use the positive one for the first and then the second one I'm going to invert it completely. The positive voltage becomes negative and the negative voltage becomes positive. Which means that this inverted pattern has now a weight of what? Minus one. Minus one. Sah? So, which indicates to the receiver that this is not the direct mapping. Why? Because as we said, the direct mapping uses either positive one or zero. So, so this indicates to the receiver that if you have any, any signal element combination with a weight minus one, this means that pay attention to the fact that this is the inverted 
combination. So the receiver will invert this before it goes to the lookup table to get the bit representation. Okay? And by doing this, what we did is that we have maintained the number of positive voltage levels and negative voltage levels to become almost equal. And by having the changes of these signal elements, this means that we have removed the DC component because the DC component comes from the fact that the voltage level becomes uh, positive all the time or negative all the time. If it's positive all the time, this means that it, it gets closer to the zero frequency component. You see what I mean? By doing this, we have eliminated the fact that we, we have such situation that we have multiple positive uh, uh, voltages all equal which, which generates low frequency at closer to zero. Okay? So in that case, we always maintain the positive and negative. We always have change. We always have change of parity which, which creates that change all the time. So this way, we actually remove the DC component and at the same time reduce the average power because if the, if the average voltage is around zero all the time, then this reduces the average power. Okay? So, so this DC balance is, is important in that case. This scheme is called 8B60. And um, as we have discussed last time, 8 binary, which means that I'm mapping 8 bits, 8 binary bits, I'm mapping them using um, signal element group of size 6, which means I have 6 signal elements. And T stands for ternary. Ternary, as we said last time, ternary stands for, it's, it's like it represents 3. So I have three levels. I have positive and I have negative and I have zero. Okay? So um, this um, uh, 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 explains the, uh, this naming convention, the 8B60. And as we said, we, here we try to always maintain the positive voltage and negative voltage. And if we have two consecutive patterns with positive one uh, voltage, then we try to invert one of them, the second one. We try to invert the second one to become negative. So this way, we always have the positive voltage and negative voltage uh, equal. Of course, if the, if the weight is zero, then I don't have to do anything. So if the weight is zero, like this pattern, then no need to do anything. This one has a weight of one, right? And this one originally has a weight of 1, so I, I need to invert it because to try to avoid the fact that I have two consecutive patterns with positive weight of 1. Okay? Any questions here? So after the positive directly, you do the inverting? Right. <clears throat> after one positive weight, then the second one, if it's 0, then you leave it as is. But if it's one, then you invert it. <clears throat> okay? So, uh, another uh, <clears throat> line coding scheme, which is actually uh, used for, uh, uh, for Ethernet a lot, for, for special types of Ethernet, uh, which is that uh, 10 base T, or sorry, uh, 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 1000 base T, which is the gigabit Ethernet. Uh, it's called 4D PAM5. And this actually violates the naming convention that we're used to. And we'll talk about why this violates the naming convention. So 4D stands for four dimension. So four dimension. Uh, and then we have five different levels for each signal element. So here, each signal element has five different uh, 
levels. One of them is zero, okay? <clears throat> but zero is not used for mapping. Zero is excluded only to enhance error detection. What does that mean? This means that if for any reason the receiver receives a level of zero, then it knows that this signal pattern has some error. Okay, so this way, um, 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 uh, if there is any zero level, the receiver will say, okay, this has an error. So because otherwise, uh, if all the levels are positive and negative, then there's, um, there might be an error and the receiver doesn't know. Okay? So, by having one extra level, uh, it's always uh, increasing the redundancy in the, in the signal elements is always used to enhance uh, error detection. Why? Because I can enforce some logic on these signal patterns to use certain levels or to use certain level combinations, certain um, uh, signal element combinations, and exclude some. So if the receiver receives the ones that are excluded, it knows that there is an error. So always uh, the redundancy in the signal levels, I can always use it for my benefit to enhance uh, the error detection by indicating to the receiver that if you receive some of these signal element combinations, pay attention to the fact that this, this is an error. So this is a little bit um, tricky because what happens is that by, by the uh, 4D, 4D here stands for four dimensional which means that we actually divide the, the bit pattern logically into four uh, lines, four separate lines, okay? So here we have eight, um, eight um, bit patterns and we map them into one, two, three, four, signal elements, each one has five levels, okay? So, in that case, um, the, uh, let's, let's calculate the bandwidth here. So, um, so if we were to calculate the bandwidth in that case, the bandwidth or the 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 uh, the baud rate, the baud rate or the um, signal rate equals to C times N times one over R. So all I need to do is to specify C and to specify R, and N of course is given based on the bit rate. What is R here? R is the uh, is the number of bits divided by the, the number of signal elements, right? So we have the number of bits 8, so R equals to 8 multiplied uh, or divided by huh? 4. So it, which is 2. Okay? So this means that this board rate or signal rate is um, n divided by 2 okay multiplied by c if we assume that c is um, is 1 half which is the average so the average in that case is um, for, for c is 1 half this is the average the worst case is what if, if, if I tell you the worst case, the worst case where you always have a change in the signal level, in which case C is, a, is close to 1. C in that case is close to 1. So the, in other words, this is the worst case signal rate. Okay, so if C, um, as we said before, C indicates the, uh, 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 the signal factor which 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 is somewhere between 0 and 1, right? And we said that 0 happens if we have no change whatsoever. And 1 is when we have 
always change in the signal level okay and typically typically we select C around half okay to indicate an average signal rate and we said that this average signal rate is uh, actually represents the minimum bandwidth I need to send this uh, signal uh, using uh, baseband communication right which means that if I put C equal 1 this is the worst case signal rate this is the worst case signal rate okay so um, so if you want to calculate the average put C equal a one half so <coughs> this uh, 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 this means that I take each, it's logically, it's as if, it's as if, actually this is done all at once. I take eight bits and I convert them into four sig signal elements with five different levels on each signal element. Okay, so this is as if I take each two bits and I map them directly using a, the, uh, the 2B, 1Q, line coding scheme that we have discussed before where we have um, where we have here um, each line okay has five levels excluding the zero then we have four levels right and we use that to represent uh, two bits and we have four uh, combinations so we have four levels and it works fine, right? So uh, it's a, this is as if we um, use the um, each two bits on a separate line, and actually that's that's what happens physically on the lines. Remember that we have um, the ten base T or something. We have we have more than one line, right? We have like eight lines or something, right? So uh, we use four of these lines. To, uh, to send each signal element in parallel, okay? Which means that if we have um, a signal rate, or sorry, a, a data rate of one gigabits per second, we send this over four lines, each line, each line is um, uh, uh, 250 megabits per second. It's one quarter the bit rate, okay? So, uh, as we said, for each one, the, the worst, the worst, huh? not the average, the worst signal rate is n over 2, right? The worst, huh? The worst signal rate is n over 2, which is, uh, for each line, we have 125 megabaud for each of these lines. And again, even though it says here uh, PAM5, but the fifth level, which is zero, is excluded from the map. Why? Because we use it for enhancing error detection. Okay? So, so this one uses four, it's as logically, it uses four parallel lines. Each one uses the uh, the 2B1Q line coding. 2B1Q, as we said, it takes each two bits and maps them into a separate level, one of the four levels that, uh, that we have. Plus two, plus one, minus one, minus two. Okay? Any, any question here? So we calculated the bandwidth, the ba the, or the, the, the signal rate. Again, worst, worst signal rate we put C equal 1. The, the normal, in normal cases, we put C equal 1 half. Okay, so this is based on the worst case. This, this might be a little bit confusing when we go through the textbook. We always, I mean, for, for the previous line schemes, we always use C equal 1 half, and based on that, we calculated the value. But for this line coding scheme in the book, it mentions worst case signal rate. So the worst case signal rate, the, the, the signal rate for each line is, is actually the, the bit rate divided by 8. Because we divide by 2 
for, uh, for the four lines, and then we divide by the number of lines, which is four. So we end up actually dividing for each line, we divide the original bit rate by eight. Okay? One half, right. Yeah. We will end up with n by n by four, right? Right. Okay. So the r will be equal to. Uh, r is always two. Uh huh. R is always two. Then nothing will change here if. Mahua, uh, mahua. If if I send on four parallel lines, the bit rate will be divided by four, right? Right. So here, the, again, the signal rate for this bit rate is, is n over 2. Or if c equals 1 half, then it will be n over 4. Right? But n is, is this, not this, not the original one. n is a, the one on, the, on this line, which is, which is the original bit rate divided by 4, because I have 4 parallel lines. Any, any other questions? Hmm. Okay. Clear? Okay. The last category of the line coding scheme, so we talked about again, so we'll, we'll summarize in a bit, but quickly just to uh, uh, get you back to the global picture, we have line coding schemes and we have divided them into categories. We discussed a category called unipolar, where we have all the levels above zero. We discussed Polar, which, we have, which, which means we have levels either above zero or below zero. Okay? And then we discuss the bipolar, which, which means that we have above zero, below zero, and zero. Okay? Uh, and then we have discussed the multi-level, where we have, uh, for each signal elements, we have more than uh, two levels. We have uh, four or more. Okay? And this is multi-transition. This is the last category of line coding schemes. For multi-transition, what we mean is that we're not actually mapping level by, we're not mapping the bit pattern into uh, a level. What we are doing is that we're mapping the bit, we're mapping single bit into a logic to transition the voltage level, which means that if, 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 for example, it's zero, this means that you have to transition up. If it's one, then you have to, to do a, a, a different transition. Okay? So it's not mapping zero into a, a specific absolute signal level. It's mapping the zero into a certain logic for how to transition the voltage level, either to positive or to negative or to zero. Okay? based on the previous voltage. So this uh, 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 MLT, or the multi-transition uh, uh, using three signal levels only, so in that case, I can say that this is bipolar, but we do not categorize it as bipolar because we, we don't actually map the bit into a signal level. We map a bit into transition. That's why we call it multi-transition. So, so the, 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 the logic here is simple. Uh, uh, if we have zero, if the current bit is zero, then there is no transition. So if, if, um, if the current bit is zero, if the next bit is zero, then there is no transition. Which means that this does not necessarily mean that it's, it's, um, uh, the level of voltage is zero. This means that if the previous voltage is positive, then you keep positive. If the previous is zero, then you keep zero. If the previous is negative, then you keep negative. Okay, Keda? So it's, uh, it's, so it's the way you transition from one level to another. So if the next bit is zero, then there is no transition. Okay. If the next bit is 1, then there are two cases. There are two cases. If the current level is 0, then the next level is 0, which means that 
if the next bit is 1, like this, if the current bit is 0, then you keep 0. If the current bit is not, if the, if the current voltage is not 0, then uh, if, the, if the next bit is 1 and the current level is 0, then the next level is opposite of the previous non-zero level. What does that mean? This means that, let's take this example. Let's take the one here. The, the, the first one is zero. Then I take the next bit. The next bit is, is one, okay? So the next bit is one, then I have to do a certain transition. Because if it's zero, I do no transition. If it's one, I have to do a transition. The transition logic is as follows. If the previous level is zero, if the previous level is, uh, is zero, okay, then I have to change it to the opposite of the last non-zero. So this indicates that since I went positive, this means that here there was a non-positive, uh, and in that case, it's a negative voltage. Because I have to uh, I have to reverse. I have to do the opposite. Okay, we'll 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 go on, and it will become clearer. So the next bit now is zero. Zero means eh? no transition. So keep constant. Tamam? And then one. The next bit is 1. 1, I have to do a transition. The transition logic is as follows. If the next bit is 1, which is the case now, and the current level is 0, which is not this case. The current level is not 0. The current level is, e, is positive. So I have to go to the next, I have to go to the second rule here. The current level is not 0. If the current level is not 0, then switch it to 0. So, which is what happened here. So, the, 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 the current level is not zero, and I have one. Then I have to do a transition. Then transition to zero. The next bit is one. The next bit is one, then I have to do a transition. The current voltage is zero. Then I have to go to non-zero. So, go to positive or negative opposite to the to the previous non zero the previous non zero voltage is positive then i have to go negative if the previous non zero is negative then i have to go positive question any question so i have to check next to the previous yes yes and next next bit and the current voltage Okay, so this is the this is the, the finite state machine, which maps this logic. So it says that if you if you are if your current uh, if the next bit is zero and your current voltage this is the current voltage level. So the state here is represents the the voltage level whether the voltage level is zero or positive voltage or negative voltage. Okay. So, if I am in a, in a zero voltage level and I receive zero bit, then I keep, I keep my voltage level as is. Okay? If I, the same thing, if I'm in a, in a negative voltage and I receive zero, I keep a negative. If I'm in the in positive voltage and I receive zero, no transition, so keep a constant. So the question is, if I am uh, in, a, in a zero voltage level, and then I receive one, then I have to do transition. If I am in a, 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 a positive voltage, and I receive one, then I go to zero. If I am in a negative voltage, which means non-zero voltage, and I receive one, all also a go to zero. 
تمام؟ And then if I'm in a, uh, 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 in a zero voltage level and I receive one, then I go to either of them. This or this, based on A, based on a condition. If the last non-zero uh, uh, level is negative, then go to positive. If it's positive, then go to negative. Okay? So the idea here is um, يعني, we try to reduce the bandwidth by creating that, that simple logic and to, to, to be able to comprehend that let's take the worst case scenario the worst case scenario is that if we have consecutive ones if we have consecutive ones then we end up with a signal which looks a little bit interesting why? because we have one and the voltage level here is positive the next one is one which means I have to do transition I'm in a non-zero voltage level so I have to go to zero, right? and then one I have to do a transition then I'm in a, a, a zero then I have to go to either positive or negative if the previous one is positive then I have to go negative and you end up with a signal that looks very interesting even though we have absolutely no change in, in the bit pattern but we ended up with a very interesting signal that looks like this um, if, if you look at this signal then you can easily realize that this is actually a periodic digital signal that repeats itself every eight, every four signal elements every four signal elements okay which is very interesting because I can represent this signal using um, a sine wave يعني in, the, in, the, in the most approximated case I can represent this using a sine wave of frequency n over 4 which is a, which is a very good achievement because here the, the, best, the best one we have talked about so far in the, um, uh, 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 in the signal bit representation. In multi-level, it's a different, different thing. But if you go back to the line coding schemes, you, you will see that the best one in terms of bandwidth was actually n over 2, n divided by 2. But here, I can reduce the bandwidth even more by doing this multi-transition. Okay? Because here in the worst case scenario, I was able to convert uh, a constant bit pattern into a periodic digital signal with a cycle of four signal elements uh, at a time, which means that the bandwidth is, is actually on the average n divided by four. So that's, that's, that's uh, uh, very attractive, uh, except that always multi-transition creates some kind of, uh, of a problem because as, as, uh, as one of you indicated here is that I have to look at the previous non-zero uh, uh, voltage level which is in many cases complicated so I have to keep track of previous signal elements how I mapped uh, these signal elements before and based on that I have to do that it's, it's unli uh, unlike the uh, the one-to-one -one mapping so based on this bit I put this, the, the voltage level at a certain level and that's it Right? So it's a one-to-one -one mapping. It's, so it's very fast. But here, I have to do a transition, so I have to do this logic. And I have to go back and look at the previous signal levels, how they look like, before I map the next signal element, which is a little bit complicated. But with this extra level of complexity, I was able to reduce the bandwidth. Okay? Also, to go back to our evaluation matrix, we have, again, a DC component. Do we have DC components here? We do, actually. If you have, if you have consecutive zeros, 
If you have consecutive zeros, then you have no, uh, 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 no transition, right? So if you are in a negative voltage, you keep negative. If you are positive voltage, you keep positive, right? So we still have DC component if we were to have consecutive zeros. So, we did, so this, this scheme, although it looks attractive from the bandwidth point of view, but it did not eliminate the DC component. The, the self-synchronization has been enhanced, but again, not eliminated, because of the fact that if we have repeated zeros, then we keep constant, which means that, again, self-synchronization self is not achieved. So that the only motivation behind this is actually to reduce the bandwidth. So we were able to reduce the bandwidth by doing this transition. But we did not resolve the DC component, we did not resolve the self-synchronization. At least did not eliminate it. Of course, the, the self-synchronization is maintained if we have consecutive ones, which is clear from this, uh, from this signal here. So as long as we have changes at every bit, then we have self-synchronization. But unfortunately, we do not have the same situation if we have consecutive zeros. Okay? Then, if we go back and look at these line encoding schemes, we see that um, in some cases we were able to uh, resolve the self-synchronization when we have consecutive ones, in many cases. Okay? But we cannot eliminate it completely. So if we have, if we go back to, uh, for example, the AMI uh, uh, scheme, you will find that, again, we were able to resolve the consecutive ones case, and we were able to achieve self-synchronization for consecutive ones. But, again, consecutive zeros is always a problem. Okay? So we need to do something else to fix the consecutive zeros. So remember that, again, the, um, the, 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 uh, the line coding schemes uh, that have uh, one bit to one signal element representation, they have the problem of self-synchronization in general. They have the problem of self-synchronization, particularly for the case of consecutive zeros. They are attractive from the simplicity point of view. They are simple. You take one bit, you map it into a signal level. And here, we have either two levels or we have three levels. And we can use this third level or the zero level for our benefit to achieve some kind of self-synchronization. But again, I mean, it remains the issue of consecutive zeros where we still have uh, a problem. So just to summarize all the line coding schemes, these are the, um, the different categories. So we have talked about unipolar, unipolar here, or non-return to zero. This actually uses zero or positive voltage. And we said that uh, this is ghostly from the power point of view. Why? Because if, if, if the voltage levels are always positive, then the average voltage is always positive, which means that the power is, is high. Right? Um, unlike polar, polar means that we have positive and negative. So the average voltage tends to be around zero, which reduces the average power. Okay? So by having the polar, we have above zero and below zero only. We don't have zero voltage level. So in that case, we have studied the non-return to zero level where we have uh, 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 either positive or, uh, or negative. So for example, one is positive, zero is negative, or the other way around, doesn't matter. And then the inversion where we use the, uh, the inversion rule. So. Uh, so one means no change and, and, uh, uh, and, sorry, zero means no change and one means invert and so on. And um, we have analyzed each of these line coding schemes against the evaluation criteria that we have talked about, including DC component, including baseline wandering, and including the, um, what was the third one again? Self-synchronization. Okay, so in many of, in many of these cases, uh, we, uh, we have all the three criteria um, not satisfied. So many of these schemes 
they have a problem in search synchronization, they have a problem of baseline wandering, and they have a problem with DC component. Um, and then in the non return to zero inversion, we were able to, again, because we use the consecutive ones to invert, so we were able to achieve self-synchronization if we have consecutive ones, similar to the multi-transition. So self-synchronization is attained for consecutive ones, but it's not attained for cons consecutive zeros, because for zeros, we keep the voltage level as is, which creates problems. So here, we were able to solve the self-synchronization 50% of the time. And we will see now, in a minute, how we will solve the problem of consecutive zeros. And then we talked about Manchester or biphase, and biphase actually tends to map each signal, each bit, into two signal elements. In which case, of course, the bandwidth will be, will be potentially doubled. So the bandwidth here is costly. And then bipolar or AMI, uh, which, which seems to be attractive from the bandwidth point of view. So it tries to, to, um, uh, to again, solve the problem of, uh, of the uh, biphase by representing one bit to one signal element. And here we were able to, uh, uh, um, for again, for, to, to achieve self-synchronization for consecutive ones because for consecutive ones again we we have to uh, change the level which maintains some timing information the bandwidth is seems to be attractive but again it remains that we were able to one one very attractive uh, 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 feature in AMI is the DC component DC component has been eliminated so we do not have any DC component we do not have any positive power in the zero frequency, okay? And we did that by the fact that we mean if, if we have no change, which means frequency is zero, we maintain the voltage level at zero, which means we have zero power, okay? But again, the issue of consecutive zeros still remains, which we will try to fix right now, okay? And then multi-level, which seems to be attractive from the bandwidth point of view, but we had some issues again with DC component and self synchronization and what and, and 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 so on. And then finally the multi line or the multi transition. So, um, so now the, the 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 challenge is that for the line coding schemes, either bipolar or polar, we have the issue of self-synchronization, particularly if we have consecutive zeros. Okay? So, block coding is a complementary uh, uh, um, scheme which works hand-in-hand -hand with the line coding scheme. So, the two of them, they have to cooperate. They have to work together. It's not that block coding replaces line coding. Block coding is used with line coding, okay? So the block coding is, uh, is used to enhance these two, these two factors. To ensure the self-synchronization, and we have to do that by avoiding these consecutive zeros, because consecutive zeros creates fixed voltage level, and we need some timing information, so we need to change, we need some changes. Okay? And to provide error detection. And we'll see how. All the block coding schemes, they are, they have this naming convention. So we map each M bits into N bits, such that M is more than or equal to M. And in all cases, it's actually uh, it's greater than M. So, for example, you map each four bits into five bits. Or you map eight bits into ten bits. Okay? So, by doing that, we are um, adding some overhead, right? 
صح؟ we are increasing uh, the number of bits okay so will that really help? the answer is yes it, it will help uh, significantly so let's see how so again block coding the motivation behind using block coding is to again to enhance the self-synchronization and to improve error detection so let's see how so what happens is that uh, the way that block coding works is that we take each m bits simply and we map it into uh, n bits okay such that n is greater than m okay so so see the benefit of this or let's see first how does this work with the uh, uh, line coding scheme so as we said before the non return to zero inversion solves in a way the issue of consecutive ones right by inverting so it inverts the problem comes if we have consecutive zeros so what will happen is that i will have the block coding scheme before that and i will try to map all the consecutive zeros into non consecutive zeros uh, uh, bit pattern which means i'll try to avoid each time I have four zeros, I have to, read to map them into something else. So this way, I will never end up with consecutive zeros. But to be able to do that, I have to have more bits than the bits that I have. Because if I have the same number of bits, then I have the same number of combinations, which means I'm, I will be forced at some point to have consecutive zeros. Then, if, if, if I have four bits, I have to have five bits. I have to. Because I have to eliminate the old zeros from, uh, from the mapping, right? By having five bits, how many combinations do I have? Double the previous one. Right? Okay? So, if I have four bits, and I map them into five bits, then... I went up from 16 combinations into 32. So, so I had to increase one bit, which has given me double the bit representation. So I can easily get rid of the of the all zero combination. Okay. And it turns out to, to be beneficial in other in other cases as well. Because again, as we said before. Uh, 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 the the more I, I I the more redundant bit representations I have, the better your error detection will be, because simply the receiver if it receives any bit pattern from the ones that are not used, it knows that there is an error, so it eliminates that uh, uh, that, that bit representation completely, so it knows that. If it receives any of the uh, uh, signal representations which correspond to uh, uh, bits that are not part of the of the mapping, it knows that this is an error. So it it, it removes the uh, this bit representation. So again, so uh, so what I try to do is that I put this block before the line coding scheme to avoid the consecutive zero pattern from uh, the binary bits incoming. So let's see how, how this is done. So the, uh, the 4B, 5B block coding scheme has this simple uh, uh, lookup table. So I have four, if I have four zeros, I will remove these four zeros and have Three ones and then and then zero. Remember that I have four. Sorry, four ones and four ones and then and then zero. Remember, I have four ones. Someone might ask, I'm, 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 I'm actually doing instead of consecutive zeros, I'm doing consecutive ones." Remember that I don't have a problem with consecutive ones. Remember that, صح? 
because for uh, uh, for the polar representation n r z dash i, I use the inversion. So one means invert, and by inverting, I will not end up with constant voltage, which means I do not have any problem. So consecutive ones is not actually a problem for me. Okay, so any consecutive zeros like this, i e, I add them, I map them into um, some kind of a, a, a bit pattern which gives me some change. And I can use the redundant bit combination to create some kind of a multiple changes. For example, instead of 0, 0, 1, 1, I have 1, 0, 1, 0. So I always have a change. Okay? And of course, this means that I will have some other bit representations which are not part of the lookup table. So here I have the 16 uh, 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 bit combinations, I, and I map them into another 16. But I have 16 different combinations that are not used. These 16 bit representations that are not used, I can use them for two things. I can use them, again, as we said, to enhance the error detection. Okay? And I can use them to indicate some control signals. So from the physical layer, I can use this bit pattern, for example, to indicate that this is a start of a frame. This is that, which is what we call start delimiter, end delimiter. I can use it to indicate, مثلا, that uh, the sender is going quiet, which means the sender is going to sleep or something. Or the sender is going idle, which means that I'm awake, but I'm idle. I'm not doing anything. So I can use these bit representations to indicate some control signals, which is, in fact, what happens in physical layer. As we have discussed in 455, there are two with that and so alpha example the quiz. The, um, the physical layer has two functionalities, right? We have the, the uh, coding and signaling. This talks about the coding. So this talks about the coding. And we said that what is the function of coding? The, the coding is important because it creates this polarity change which avoids the consecutive zeros uh, 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 case, which again enhances the, the reception at the receiver side. And then I take these uh, five bits, and then I... I, I, I map them into signals, into signal elements. So I can, from here, I can use non-return to zero i, okay, and map these, each bit, into a signal level using the line coding scheme that we have studied before. Okay? So, just to appreciate, just to be able to appreciate the, uh, uh, the, um, the, the purpose of block coding. So let's, let's see, if we have, we have a signal, we have a signal with a, a bit rate of one megabits per second. Okay? If we were to use um, the the uh, uh, the Manchester or the uh, biphase, okay. Why do we need to use biphase? Because as we said, for biphase we have eliminated the the issue of self synchronization. We were able to have self self synchronization by having two signal elements at each bit, right? So in that case, I will never end up with constant voltage. Neither for the, for the positive, uh, sorry, for the consecutive zeros or for the consecutive ones. So if we go back and study the biphase, we will see that if we have consecutive zeros, we end up with voltage change. If we have consecutive ones, we end up with voltage change. This means that I have no DC component and I always have self synchronization. What is the cost here? Bandwidth, probably. So the bandwidth here, the bandwidth is simply the, um, so for Manchester, uh, 
the bandwidth is uh, C, let's see uh, that C is half. N is one megabits per second. One, let's, let's uh, use, it, use the one megabits per second. Multiplied by R. R, uh, or one over R. R here is eight. R here is one over two, which means that one over R is two. So? which means that the bandwidth here is one mega bits per second, or, yeah, sorry, one mega hertz. Or in other words, the, the, this is the minimum bandwidth, I mean. Okay? Type. So this is one alternative. Okay? And I had to use Manchester to avoid the the issue of self-synchronization. Let's see if, what is the other alternative? The other alternative is to use block coding plus NRZI. So, so block coding followed by NRZI. For NRZI, the bandwidth is, so the bandwidth for NRZ-I equals to Remember, R here is 1. So, because we, we map each bit into one signal element. So, in that case, the, uh, here the bandwidth is, is n over 2. So, the bandwidth is n over 2. What is n? But I have to use a block coding before, right? So if I use block coding, then I map each four bits into five bits. So what is the new bit rate? I added, I added how much bits? I added 25% of the bits. For each four, I added one, right? So I end up with a bit rate of what? Huh? The bit rate becomes a... So, so N R Z I plus plus um, four B five B. The bandwidth becomes if I have block coding plus N R Z I, then each four bits becomes five bits, which means I have. 1.25 megabits per second. Sah? So? Sah? So? For each four bits, I added one extra bit. So if I have one megabit, I have to add 25% of the bits. Sah? So? I have to have an overhead of 25%. Yani, if I have 100 bits, then I end up, I, uh, after the block coding, I end up with a 125. So, for each four bits, I have one. For each four bits, I have one. So if I, if I put them like this, I end up with 125. So if I have one mega bits per second, then I end up with 1.25 megabits per second. So, so N, the new N is 125 divided by 2. And this is actually um, 625 kilo. Kilo bits per second. So? If it's bandwidth, it's kilohertz. Bravo, Arik. So? So which one is better? The second one, right? So the first one I use Manchester only. I ended up with a bandwidth of 1 megahertz. For the second choice, I use block coding plus 
the simple line coding scheme NRZI, I ended up with 625 kilohertz. So it looks like line coding scheme has helped me to uh, uh, eliminate the, uh, the consecutive zero issue. And even though this adds an, an overhead, but, but I ended up with less bandwidth requirements. Because Manchester tends to solve the problem fundamentally by adding double the bandwidth. So it's very costly in terms of bandwidth. So the block coding added 25% only, 25% overhead, and uh, uh, solved the case of consecutive zeros. Any slide? Okay. How did we get one over the RNC? Uh, it's like for what? What an R here? We we map each one signal, uh, each single bit using two signal elements, right? Mm -hmm. Because for Manchester, the zero is um, is positive and then negative, and then for one it's negative and then positive. Now you have to go back and and, and remember the line coding stuff. Okay, so each bit will be represented using two signal elements. By doing this, R is simply 1 over 2. So 1 over R is 2. Huh? So I doubled the bandwidth. Block coding has not doubled the bitrate, remember. Block coding has increased slightly the bitrate by 25%. So? But uh, in that case, it also solved the problem of search synchronization and, uh, 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 and DC component or the consecutive zero issue. Okay, I thought, I thought this pen would be a little bit more accurate, but it... So, so you can have, you can have a block coding scheme uh, that maps each four bits into five bits, which is the one that we talked about. Um, in some cases, we actually have to, um, in some cases, the bit representation is not synchronized, which means that I can have these four bits mapped before these four bits. Okay? Here, the logic, I have to agree with the receiver on the, on the order, and this order is, is done such that, again, I maintain the, uh, uh, the level of positive and negative voltage. So I, I always keep the polarity uh, close to zero. So if I have positive voltages, I may actually reorder things in order to, e to, to change the polarity and so on. But this order has to be agreed upon with the receiver. So this actually, it's the same thing, but it, it's by reordering uh, the bit pattern. Okay? So that's a, that's a simple thing that simple trick that the, uh, the sender and the receiver they can agree uh, on. Uh, in some cases, I can represent 8 bits using 10 bits. Okay? Uh, so for block coding that maps each 8 bits into uh, 10 bits, I can represent this using 2 sorry, I can represent this using two uh, block coding, each one is, five, is, is four to five. Okay, so uh, uh, I actually have the first four bits go to this, the second four bits go to this, um, uh, uh, the highest four bits or the lowest four bits and so on, and I can use these two blocks to represent the eight to ten block coding scheme. Okay? And again, this disparity controller creates the exact same thing that we talked about in previous slide. So if the, if the, if the, if the number of uh, positive voltage is higher, I can actually change the polarity. I can invert the polarity to avoid that I have always positive voltage. I have to maintain the positive voltage for a longer period of time. So I can then invert. Okay? 
So I, uh, so in that case, I actually split the eight to ten block coding scheme into um, uh, here. It says five to six, uh, five to six. Uh, so I can do it either way. So I can do it using two uh, block coding schemes. One is four to five, or I can use five to six and then three to four. It do doesn't matter. Okay. And then, as I said, we use the disparity controller to balance the, 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 the zero voltage and the negative uh, voltage. Okay? So, so we stop. So, okay, so we'll stop here, inshallah, and we'll continue next time.